Hello everyone, I am Jagujit. I am a PhD student in IIT Kanpur. I work in the Soft and Active Metal Lab. Let me write out my name. Jagujit. Sangha. Okay, and uh, I am also a recipient of the Prime Minister Research Fellowship. And for that reason, I have created this YouTube channel to upload some lecture videos. In this lecture series, I will try to solve questions from competitive exams like JAM, JEST, GATE for physics. So, I hope these videos will be helpful for the students who are preparing for these exams. Uh, although I will try and solve questions that have appeared in the previous year's examinations, my approach will not be to get to the solution of the problems in a shortcut way. Rather, I will try to explain the background theory for the problems so that any other problems of similar kind can be easily tackled. And oftentimes, I will try and find some way to extend the problems to explain some other related questions. I have also created a website and I will be posting the links to the video to that website also. And the uh, website ID is given in the description of this video and will be given in the description of all the videos. So you can check that to know more about me and my research. And uh, one more thing, uh, please check the description of each video because if there are any correction to the video or so, for example, if I uh, say something wrong or if there is any calculation mistake, then those corrections will be given in the description. So, let us begin. We will start by doing problems of thermal physics. So, let's go to the first problem. Okay, good afternoon everyone. So let us start with the first problem of today. This problem uh, was given in 2005 jam exam and the problem is yeah, here. It states that the molar specific heat of a gas as given from the kinetic theory is 5 by 2R. If it is not specified whether it is Cp or Cv, one could conclude that the molecule of the gas is definitely monoatomic and definitely rigid diatomic, definitely non-rigid diatomic or it can be monoatomic or rigid diatomic. So this is a MCQ question and we have to choose one of the uh, answers which is correct. So before starting with it, let us first go through uh, the definition of molar specific heat once again. So molar specific heat. So, it is defined by the amount of heat needed to increase the temperature of one mole of gas by 1 degree centigrade. So, with this definition in head, we can define Cp and Cv as follows. So, Cv will be the molar specific heat at constant volume and Cp will be similarly the molar specific heat at constant pressure. So, we have to keep in mind that for Cv the volume is kept constant and for Cp the pressure is kept constant. Now, we can proceed with uh, how 
CV and CP are defined and from there we can derive the answers. So we know from thermodynamics that CV is given by del U del T at constant V where U is the internal energy. energy T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin scale and V is the volume and CP and CV they are related to each other by this equation CP minus CV is equal to R which is the famous Mears formula. So this is Mears formula and here R is the universal gas constant. And in this regard, we need to define uh, another quantity which is given by gamma equal to Cp over Cv. Uh, this is known as the adiabatic index or the Laplace's coefficient. So, you will also find many problems where this has been, this gamma has been asked to calculate. So, this is adiabatic coefficient. So now, now that we have these formulas, let us calculate the CV. So to calculate the CV from this formula, we need to first calculate the total internal energy. So let us uh, have a gas where the internal energy of a particle is given by kvt by 2 times f. So, let us define the terms here. So, here u is internal energy of a particle due to the thermal motions. kv is the Boltzmann constant and it is given by R over Na where Na is the Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number and its value is 1.38 times 10 to the power minus 23 joule per Kelvin inverse to the power minus 23 okay and t we have already defined so now what is this f parameter f is nothing but the number of degrees of freedom so you know that now from equipartition theorem that for each degrees of freedom uh, it contributes a kv2 by 2 uh, energy towards the internal energy. So, from that we obtain this formula. So, from here if we define the uh, internal energy of one mole of gas uh, with the capital U formula, capital U symbol, then this is energy of one mole yes this will be nothing but small u times n and if we um, solve this expression it will be f times kbt by 2 times n a we can write kb as 
and we can write that cv is ddt of u or fr over 2 so now we have obtained cv so what will be cp we can use the mayor's formula and write cp is equal to cv plus r which will be f plus 2 over 2 times r and lastly the adiabatic index will be cp over cv which will be f by 2 sorry f plus 2 over f so it will be 1 plus 2 over f now we will consider case by case what will be the cp and cv value so let us first uh, change the color and first we will look at the monoatomic case so for monoatomic uh, one monoatomic particle what will be the number of degrees of freedom that we have to that we have to know degrees of freedom So we have to know the value of f. So for monoatomic particle, one particle can move yeah, freely in all the three direction x, y and z. And uh, that's why we will have f equal to 3. There will be 3 degrees of freedom. So with 3 degrees of freedom, we can let me get some space here okay so with three degrees of freedom we'll have f equal to three so in that case cv will be three r by two cp will be five r by two and we don't need gamma in this problem but uh, um, anyway let me calculate what is what will be the value of gamma that will be 5 over 3. Now we look at the more interesting case which are diatomic. So there are two uh, type of uh, two types of diatomic uh, molecules given in the question. One is the definitely rigid diatomic and definitely non-rigid diatomic. So let us derive these values for both cases. So for Let me delete that. So for non-rigid diatomic case, again you need to find F. So here two molecules will be close to each other and each of them will have 3 degrees of freedom each. So, this will have 3 degrees of freedom and this will have 3 degrees of freedom. So, in total there will be 6 degrees of freedom. So, F will be 6 in this case and from that we can get CV is 6R by 2 which is nothing but 3R and CP is 8R by 2 which is nothing but 4R and our gamma will be 4 by 3. Now we look at the case 
where rigid diatomic molecule is given. So, in this case, uh, the two So, in this case, the two atoms, they will have a constant distance in between them. So, this will be constant. So, what will be the degrees of freedom in this case? The, this molecule will have 3 degrees of freedom. This molecule will also have, sorry, this atom will have 3 degrees of freedom and this will also have 3 degrees of freedom but there is one constraint so this will be minus 1 so the total degrees of freedom will be 3 plus 3 minus 1 which is equal to 5 so compared to the non-rigid diatomic case we have one less degrees of freedom here because there is a constraint there is a constraint that the distance between the atoms has to be fixed and this is reducing the degrees of freedom by 1. So, now that we have f equal to 5, we can calculate Cv as 5r by 2, we can calculate Cp as 7r by 2 and similarly gamma will be 7 over 5. Okay, so now that we have calculated the CP and CP and CV value for all the cases, let us visit the problem once again. It was given in the problem that the specific heat is 5 by 2 R. So let us see in which cases we have got 5 by 2 R. So for monoatomic case, the CP can be 5 by 2 R. For non-rigid diatomic case, uh, nothing can be uh, 5 by 2 R and for rigid diatomic case the CV can be 5 by 2 R. So to answer the question the specific heat sorry the specific molar specific heat equal to 5 by 5 R by 2 it can be when it can be CV for rigid diatomic case or it can be CP for monoatomic case. So, CV dia rigid equal to 5 r by 2 cp mono so the correct answer will be the option number 4 which states it can be monoatomic or rigid diatomic like we have obtained here So, this is the answer, okay. So, okay, so this is the first problem. Now, we'll move on to another problem which will require similar uh, knowledge so that we can exercise a similar thing. Okay, so now we are in the second problem. So this problem appeared in uh, 2007 jam. So the problem states that experimental measurements of heat capacity per mole of aluminium at low temperatures show that the data can be fitted to the formula Cv equal to At plus B Tq, where A is 
0.00135 joule kelvin inverse mole inverse and b is 2.48 times 10 to the power minus 5 joule kelvin to the power minus 4 mole inverse and t is the temperature in kelvin now they have asked to find the entropy of a mole of aluminium at such temperatures uh, so we have to find the entropy and this is again another MCQ so there is only one correct option so let us uh, start by writing the first law of thermodynamics So, the first law of thermodynamics states that dq is equal to du plus dw, where dq is the change in heat, du is the change in internal energy, and dw is the work done. Now, we can identify dq with dds. We can identify du with the internal energy. Let us keep it in that way and dw is the work done which can be written as pdv so in this case we have been given the cv which is a spe molar specific heat at constant volume and it is written in terms of a and b which is uh, in and cv is written as a function of temperature absolute temperature which is given by cv equal to 80 plus b t q now as volume is constant so dv is going to be zero which implies that the dw term will also be zero So, we can write that TDS is nothing but DU and from the definition we know that DU is nothing but CVDT. So, we can again write this, write this equation as DS equal to CVDT over T. Now, if we integrate on both side then integration of ds will be integration over cvdt over t now as the question has asked us to calculate the entropy we can easily calculate it with this integration so let us first do that Okay, so I have just rearranged the equation and put a box around it so that we can focus on it. Now, we have to perform the integration CVDT over T. What will happen? We know the form of CV which is given in the equation in the question and I am sorry, this is a typo and CV is AT plus B pq dt over t so t 
T will, T will cancel out in the denominator and numerator and we will obtain A plus B T square D T and this will be and this will be nothing but A T plus B T Q by 3 plus C which is an integration constant. So, we have obtained that delta S which is this integration, integration over dS will give us delta S is given by a t plus b t cube by 3 plus c. So, the correct answer if we look at the problem is option number a. Now, I just do not want to stop here, but uh, I want to modify the problem a bit and look at a different case where C, not CV, but not CV, but CP was given. So, how should we proceed in that case? So, let me create some space. And we pondered the question, what if CP is given? So, to answer that, we again look at the first law of thermodynamics, which is TDS equal to BU plus PDV. And in this case, as Cp is given, that means the pressure is constant. So, dV is not equal to 0, which implies dW is also not equal to 0. So, the amount of heat that is required that will contribute to both increasing the internal energy and also in the work done. But we do not need to worry about that, we just need to focus on the first part which is dq is TDS. So, let me in, let me write the equation in this form also, dq equal to TDS. So, in that case what will be ds? ds will be nothing but dq over t and integration of ds will be integration of dq over t which will imply that some s plus my integration constant will be equal to the integration of dq over t. Now, let us recall the definition of Cp again. What is Cp? Cp is the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of one mole substance by 1 degree centigrade at constant pressure. So, if we look at this definition, we can easily identify that Cp is nothing but dq by dt. Why? Because 
if we give the Q amount of heat to increase temperature by dt amount where the volume is not constant but the pressure is constant then the quantity dq over dt will give you nothing but cp so with this we can identify that dq is nothing but cp dt and we can use this equation we can use this equation to write that is plus s0 is nothing but integration over cp dt over t so this is the formula that we can use to find the entropy again the, this approach and the previous approach where cv was given they are nothing different the only different thing is that in the previous approach as volume was constant so let me write it when cv was given so then volume was constant sorry then volume was constant and that implied dq will be du so we proceeded accordingly but it you should not worry if cp or cv is given you should follow this protocol and you will get the correct answer so that's all for this problem and I think the time for today's video is up and we will look at similar kind of problem in the next video and from the video after the next video we will do some different kind of calculations. So answer of problem. Okay, so bye.